Horizontal scrolling is an advanced interaction where your content moves sideways as you scroll vertically. However, this isn't an actual horizontal scroll. The scroll remains vertical, but we will use a GSEP to create an animation that makes your content moves horizontally. Here's the plan for the animation. First, we'll create a section that will wrap everything. This section needs extra height, which will determine the speed of our animation. Inside this section, we'll add a box that will act as our screen. This screen box will follow us as we scroll vertically. Inside our screen box, we can place any structure we want. Later, we'll target the items we want to animate inside our structure and make them move horizontally as we continue scrolling. Now let's set up our structure in the builder. First, I'm going to add a section and position it right here. I'll name it horizontal scroll for easier organization. Next, we'll create our screen. For this, I'll place a div inside our section and name it screen. With our section set, we can now pack any structure we want inside. For this example, I have already prepared a basic structure, so I'll just paste it down inside my screen div. After the structure is set, we can input some styles, beginning with our section. As mentioned before, we need to set a height for this section, so I'll set it to 400 VH. We want our screen div to be the exact same size as our viewport, so we'll set the height to 100 VH here. To make this div follow us as we scroll, I'll set its position to sticky and set the top value to 0 pixels so it sticks to the top of our screen. Now you can see that my content is getting cut off, because it needs more height than 100 VH as we set on our screen div. To fix this, I'll simply select this div and instead of display grid, I will set it to flex, so all of my cards can be aligned horizontally in one row. With this done, our cards will get squeezed inside this div and we want them to go to their full width and also extend outside of their wrapper. To achieve that, let's set the width of our cards to 50% and set the flex sizing to auto so our cards can freely grow in width. Now that we've set the sizing for our cards, we also need to add a gap between them. To achieve that, I will add right padding on this element here and we'll see later why using this method for the gap is better here. The last thing to do here is to center our content, so let's quickly select our screen div, set display flex and align everything by center. Now our structure is good to go, all we have to do now is to make it functional. To begin with the functionality, we first need to go to the project settings and under Bros plugins, install the GSEP animations plugin. After that, we can go back, select our section, switch to the settings panel and apply the plugin we previously installed. If I click here, I will see the options related to this plugin. First, I need to set target to tag and in the drop down, select the div that will be affected by this animation. We want to target the div wrapping our cards, in this case it's the scroll target div, so let's find it in the drop down by simply typing its name. In the event field we want to set scroll into view, check the follow scroll option and then scroll down a bit. In the start state set both values to top and in the end state set both values to bottom. This ensures that our animation will begin as soon as our section enters the viewport and end as the section hits the end of the viewport. If this is confusing for you, don't worry, we have a separate video that covers the GSEP plugin in details. For the animation part, we need to set the actual values. In the from state, set the X position to 0, then switch to the to state and here we need to do a little bit of math. In the X position field, we need to input a value that depends on the number of items in our animation and their width. In this case, we have 4 items with set width to 50%. We want to move 3 items to the left, each at 50% width, giving us a value of 150%. And because we want to move our cards to the left in this case, we need to input a minus before the value. Now let's see what we achieved. On the live side, as I scroll normally, you will see that as soon as this section enters the viewport, the cards will begin to scroll sideways until the section ends. You can also see how the last card aligns perfectly with the content above. This is because we calculated everything correctly. But if you want to have two cards visible at the end, you simply need to reduce the value by the width of one card, which is in our case 100%. 
Now if I test it out, you can see that at the end of the scrolling, two cards are visible. Now let's play a bit with the width of our cards. This time, let's set width to 70% and return to the plugin settings. We need to move three cards to the left, each at 70% width, giving us a value of 210%, and don't forget the minus before the value. If I go and test everything again, you will see that everything works perfectly and my card is still aligning with my content. Now let's go back and explain why we set the gap property using padding. First, let's remove the padding and set the gap property to the parent div. If I test my animation again, you will see that my last card is not aligning with the content above it. This is because the gap we added now is added as extra space between the cards, which isn't calculated in the GSEP X position value. To avoid this, set the padding directly to the card, which has a fixed width. This padding is counted as part of the card not as extra space between the cards. If you want to change the speed of your animation, you can do that by simply changing the height of your section. Currently it's 400 VH, but if I set it to 800 VH for example, you will see that the cards move slower than before and you need to scroll more for the interaction to finish. Now that we covered structure and functionality, there's one more step left. Making the section responsive for smaller devices. If I go to preview mode, shrink down my viewport and start scrolling in my section, you'll see that the cards get squeezed. While we can leave the animation as it is for some cases on smaller devices with some adjustments, here we are going to make this entire section static. To do this, first go to the plugin settings and turn off the functionality for smaller devices by unchecking these buttons. Once that's done, we can switch to the tablet breakpoint and style the section as desired. First, I'll set the height of the section to auto, so that its height can be determined by the content inside of it. I'll do the same for the screen div and set its position to static. After that, we can set the width of our cards to 100% and remove the right padding we used for the gap. Next, set the parent of the cards to be a grid and adjust the structure until it looks good. We can even set on our section top and bottom padding, so we can create a gap between our sections. Finally, check the smaller breakpoints to ensure everything fits perfectly. And that's it, we reached the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to be notified when new videos are released. Until the next time, happy building!